Look at that leaf. Isn't that beautiful? It looks like there's light just shooting across it. This is one of my favorites of the cast iron plants. Cast iron plants, if you don't know, live up to their name. Sturdy, tough, you know, like iron. Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here. How's everybody? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. But to uh, repot a plant, and thought I'd talk about its care some. I've gotten into this habit that's probably not beneficial to me, where when something's wrong with my plant, then I decide it's a good time to talk about how to take care of it. I think that's because it opens up the discussion of what's wrong here, things that you don't want to see. Those are all things that can lead to growing a happier and healthier plant. So here we are. This one could use really just a repot. I was going to say some TLC. Cast iron plants don't really need TLC. If you don't know, Aspidistra elitior and, well, many, many, many other types within the species. This one right here is, well, there's its name. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say that. Also called Tokyo Skyline, I think is the other name for it. A very common type of cast iron plant that people largely grow indoors. So outdoors, seven and up, basically. Put them in the shade, dry shade, they'll do really well there's some more to it like proper pruning time I've talked about all that I'm thinking more about houseplant care with this one so what they want is bright and direct light no light should shine directly on their foliage at least not for an extended period of time some dappled light shining through the windows fine particularly in the morning time after that just bright and direct is fine these can go into darker locations not a dark location there aren't many plants I say can go dark but a darker spot and they like dry shade. Like I mentioned, outdoors, they're a great plant for your dry shade. Indoors, they don't need a ton of water, with the exception of right when you are repotting them. Right after you repot them, they need to stay more consistently moist, but once they've established, started to push up some new growth, you don't need to keep them consistently moist. You mostly just want to water them when the soil feels like it's about 50% dry. Fertilize them with a continuous release if you want to. You don't really have to but it's an option. It's just gonna make the plant seem healthier. Liquid fertilizers that are balanced, always a good idea as well, as far as delivering nutrients more quickly to the plant and uh, keep them away from harsh drying winds. That'll create crispiness, brown edges on the foliage. Pests to watch out for would be spider mites are the main one. Spider mites love a cast iron plant. The nice thing about a cast iron plant though, is they usually stay a manageable size the largest of the largest of the cast iron plants go about 42, maximum 48 inches. I've never seen one that big, but I think there are a few types that exist. And even then, that's a, that's a moderately sized four plant. You can take it to a shower and blast it off with water. Soaps and neems work really well. The main thing I do, if I start to notice anything that looks kind of bad on there, something's looking amiss, then I put it in the sink and try and hold it at an angle and just blast it off and then neem the leaves afterwards, or use a horticultural soap or whatever type of oil you prefer, hence the name. They tend to be very, very, very long-lived house plants. Usually you only need to repot them about every three to five years, and uh, they do not require a potting mix that's really elaborate. I'm gonna be putting this into a mix that's mostly just all-purpose potting mix that added some sand to, and a handful of organic material or a more organically rich potting mix. That's just something I do to help liven things up down below, but it's really not necessary. It just needs to be something well-drained so that the plant doesn't rot out. Obviously, just dry, right? Talk about the dry conditions. You don't want them sitting in water. Uh, but they're also versatile enough that if your potting mix is airy enough, you could put them in a self-watering container if you wanted to. I don't really think that that would be necessary, but you could as long as it's a nice airy mix. Oh, and humidity. So the better the humidity, meaning the higher the humidity, the less issues you will probably have with spider mites. So that's a good thing. Less you have to worry about browning or crispy tips. On the plant, average household humidity of around 50% is generally fine for them. If you live in a more arid climate, maybe, you know, Southwest, something like that, then this might be a good plant for the bathroom. If you're having issues with the foliage staying nice and green, uh, or put it with a lot of other plants that are maybe moisture lovers, say surround it with some spathophyllums, something of the sort that'll help keep the air more moist around the plant. But typically it's not something you really have to worry about because they're just, they're just sturdy. They won't normally throw a fit. The issue I have been having with this one is that it's potting mix. It just drains way too quickly. 
Plant Delights, which is where I got this from, they have an amazing selection of Espedistra. If you're looking for a cast iron plant, they're an excellent source. The variety that they sell changes from time to time. So it's worth checking every few months if you're looking for something specifically that's not listed, they might have it later. This one right here is potted up in a mix that is great for a greenhouse in a humid environment. Not so good for in the house. In the house, I'm just I'm having to water this thing a lot, which is not something you normally need to do with a cast iron plant. So that's problem number one. Problem number two, you can see it just from looking right here. You see that rhizome? That's not supposed to be sticking up. They don't like that. That needs to be submerged beneath the soil. And that's a pretty normal thing to happen. Over time, the soil that's in the container can start to erode. And it just, you know, how many of y'all have had a house plant where somehow the soil just like is magically disappearing? It's not magic. Usually it's the roots displacing the soil and then water slowly washing out over time. But you get it. That's essentially what's been going on here. And a lot of plants, their rhizomes will naturally start to lift. That rhizome needs to be submerged though by I'd say about a quarter of an inch beneath the soil. So that's why I'm going to go ahead and get this into a new container, some fresh mix, get that rhizome buried and uh, hopefully probably won't need to repot it for several years after this. All right, and here is the pot that I'm putting this in. It's a big upgrade, a very big upgrade. Typically probably wouldn't want to go quite that big, but it's the only pot that I had laying around that I thought that this would look good in. So that's what I'm gonna use. My indoor aesthetic's very different from my outdoor aesthetic. I think this will look nice in the house. It's a container that I can move around into different rooms if I want to. I was thinking actually more about that than the plant, is that this is a set and it does get moved around from time to time. So whatever's in it needs to be something that's versatile, something that isn't going to grow incredibly quickly so that it can stay in that pot for a very long time. And uh, I would prefer something that, which I don't normally say this, but I don't really want a trailer over it because the front of the pot looks nice and it's just less mess since it's going to be moved around from room to room from time to time. Basically when the holidays are around, do some rearranging. So this is, I believe, eight inches. This is a, I think it's called a Zara planter. Zara, Zara, something like that. Zara something taupe and white is what it says on there. This is, I think that's a good fit, yeah. It's a little bit large, but it's a cast iron plant. They're so sturdy, I don't think that it's going to mind at all. And there's my soil blend. You can mostly see it, part of it's cut off, but you get it. It's a very sandy mix, holds onto some moisture, has some organic material in it. The main thing is that it's light and airy, but will still hold on to some moisture. I know there are some people who uh, plant these up in basically a cactus mix. And that's totally fine. You can do that. I live in an environment that is not quite humid enough, I think, to pull that off. I want to make sure that there's some moisture retention in here. Oh, and a drainage hole in the bottom. That's very important. I want to make sure that there's ample drainage because they're not going to want to be sitting in water. That's the kiss of death for a cast iron plant. Got some clumps in here. I didn't get quite broken up all the way. I thought I had this blended up really well. Apparently I missed a spot. Okay, and let's have a look at these roots. See what's going on in here. Probably not a lot to see. You can see that potting medium that it's in. This media is very barky, which like I said, that's great for greenhouse growth and everything. Uh, indoors, uh, just isn't really working for me. Even have some dead roots in here from it going from moist to dry and moist to dry, just a constant back and forth. They don't like that. I am seeing new root growth, so that's good. Like to see that, whole bunch actually, over here and over here. The only changes I've made with this, similar to when I talked about my Peperomia, actually I don't know if that video will be out yet. At some point I'm gonna talk about a Peperomia that has been very weird and I've had to basically keep it sitting in water. I had to do that with this one too because the soil was just draining way too fast. Anyways, you get the point, right? Got that old soil out of there into the fresh mix. I want to make sure that rhizome isn't centered. I know typically we'd want to center it, but it's going to want to keep growing out this way. So why would you want to put it in the middle? You're going to lose some growth space there. So having it back there on the edge, similar to what you would do with a ginger, right? Gingers, you want to plant them on the edge of the pot, not right in the middle. Because if you plant them in the middle, then they don't have as much room to go. 
So I'm going to start off over here and make sure that it's down low enough that I can still get some soil on top of this rhizome without also smothering much of the bases on the new growth. Okay, tripod's wobbly, but this is the only way I can get into position so you can see what I'm doing and not have everything going in and out of focus. Get a whole bunch of that in there. It's going to look like it's too deep at first, but I'm going to tap it down, water it in, and I think that that will settle this nicely. The soil blend is very, very, very fluffy and can also come in here and just lift it up. Just don't want to do it too much. Lift it up too much, then you end up having to start over and, well, that would be annoying, right? So ideally, the very base of these leaves will be exposed. There was a white margin you could see. I think that when I water this in, that should settle the soil down some more and uh, it will go down below the foliage. You don't want them planted too deep. And just looking at this right here, this is just a smidge too deep. But you can see when I mess with this with my fingers, just applying white pressure, it's starting to go down. So I may end up even actually having to add some more soil to this. Hopefully not. I wanna make sure I'm leaving enough room so that I can top dress this with some gravel if I want to, because I think that that would look nice in the long run and help hold on to some moisture in case this is drying a little bit too fast. Having something top dressed or on top of the soil, I should say, helps holding some of that moisture. Is it doing it? Got a nice flow coming out the bottom? Yeah, that's pretty good. Went ahead, watered that in, gave it, I'd say three, no, it's probably like four or five drinks from the hose until the water started to move out the bottom and made sure that water was moving nice and fast. So that's how we know the plant's going to not have to deal with root rot. That's what I was gonna say. Uh, we wanna make sure that that soil's draining really well. It looks like this has got some good drainage to it. You can see how things did settle in just about exactly how I'd want them to are on the base of the leaves so things aren't overly buried, but the rhizome is still submerged. That was really important. I could actually probably even add some more mix into this. I'm gonna give it a week maybe two. I want this to have had multiple waterings and see how much more that soil is going to settle. And then I uh, will probably add another handful of soil and then I'll top dress it with some gravel. So I just think that it will look a lot better when it's top dressed. Now this one's out of that mix that was drying way too quickly. I think that moving forward, you should really start to see some good growth on it. Considering I've only had this one for a couple of months, I, it's done a good amount of growing. I wanna say it had, I think two, leaves on there maybe three when i got it and uh, it's put up well i don't know quite a few i had to cut a couple off and i think that those were the ones that it had when it shipped uh, otherwise it's been a trooper it should be even more so of a trooper now that i'm not gonna have to water it all the time i know right now it doesn't look all that impressive it's a very pretty pot with just a few leaves sticking out the top but within about six months to a year this should have filled this out fairly well and it'll look a lot better. I think that those pretty variegated leaves, the spots and everything that they have, that's going to go nice with the container and just look nice in the house. We'll brighten things up, having some speckling around and be a very easy plant to have around. Just a fun, easy plant to grow. If you haven't tried the cast iron plants, I really suggest giving them a shot. It's nice, even if you're you know into the aeroids and uh, more exotic plants that pose more of a challenge. It's nice to have a few things around that just grow. <laughs> things that are not temperamental, that you just, you know, give them a drink every now and then. With a cast iron plant, I don't know, probably every two weeks, depending on your climate, they'll need a drink, a proper drink that flushes through all the way, not just a little, like, cup of water. It needs to flush through so that the soil's fully saturated and uh, moist. That way the roots are being evenly hydrated so that makes sense i have seen people who are newer to gardening sometimes refer to their watering in cups which and there's nothing wrong with that i understand how sometimes we want precision but really you just need to have water flowing in the top until you start to see water flowing out the bottom and even then i usually once there's water flowing out the bottom i would like count to 10 very slowly and then stop watering it make sure it drips out all the way before setting it back into a drainage dish or anything you have because you don't want that water sitting underneath there. I'd say that really is the main takeaway to growing these plants is don't let them sit in water. That's the kiss of death for them. 
don't put them into direct light unless it's morning light and even then just for a little while and that's about it you can let them dry out almost all the way between waterings depending on your environment i'd water them when the soil is about 50 percent dry uh, otherwise they're just nice they're just fun to have around they just grow get on a fertilizing schedule that just helps keep the plant healthy i'm not going to worry about that for a while because this is a fresh potting mix that already has a bunch of good stuff in it to help get the plant going i will actually on that note though i will probably water this with a root stimulator or a starter fertilizer i should say the next time i water it i didn't see a reason to do that with the initial watering because i was trying to get the soil settled in here and that would have just i think been a waste of product want to make sure that the soil is already partially moist before applying any type of fertilizers or stimulators oh and one last thing i'm just going to put this out there because whenever i talk about plants that are typically revered as plants for shade and darker locations then somebody will combat me with so and so says that these plants don't need any light it's just not true so because the plant can survive in a dark room for a long time doesn't mean the plant's happy right so you could do it you could put this in a room that doesn't have very much light and it's just getting ambient light and it'll just sit still and if that's what you want from your plant that's totally fine then you can do that but those aren't the conditions that are going to keep the plant growing and thriving those aren't generally things for longevity with the plant right so having some ambient light of some kind usually a good idea but they are one that you can keep on like the north side of the house a few feet away from the window they'll typically be okay but you're going to get better growth out of them in a nice bright location where the light isn't shining directly on them but it's very bright all around them i'd say that's about everything i have to say for this plant thanks for hanging out comment down below tips tricks suggestions always appreciated do you have favorite types of aspidistra that you're growing at home have you tried the tokyo skyline these really when they fill out and they have a whole bunch of these strappy leaves in their containers they are so 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 pretty some of my favorites are the ones that are variegated just at the tip, so they're all green, but they just have a touch of white all the way at the top. Those are really pretty too. And just your plain old regular green, Aletior. It's a beautiful Aspidistra. Just nice big green leaves. They add a lush effect to the house. They just breathe some life into the area by having that nice, simple green leaf in the room. Hope you're enjoying this view of the dirt. Not much else to look at because the plants still got a lot of growing to do. If everybody's doing well, having a great day, a great life, and everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.